Welcome, No DQ Galaxy, and we are here with the No DQ Review number 31. And I am Virtue, being joined by Aaron Rift, Greg Cherry, and TJS. What's up, guys? TJS, I'll start, I'll start with you. I, you know, I briefly suspended you from this show for five minutes because I got mad at you on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're back. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm back in the good graces of Mr. Virtue. And uh, you asked what's up. I'll tell you what's not up. Vince McMahon's IQ. We'll get to it. We'll talk about the Braun Strowman heel turn. Whoa, 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 Greg. whoa. What's the stock, wow, what what's the stock price open. right now? What? What's the stock price right now? Uh, 80, I think. Yeah, that's pretty high. Whatever, whatever, man. I, I Might be higher I just... than the IQ of Vince and the writers, but that's besides the point. <laughs> he is making that money, we will say that. Greg, what's going on? Not too much. The longest reigning. You know, I've done that bit. You know, I'm, I, I overtook Jeff last week. The greatest wrestling trivia mind of all time. That's that's what I'm going with now. <laughs> Over 200 total days as champion. I look forward to whoever I face this week. And we got a lot of topics that we have to cover, so let's get into it. Aaron, what do you think? I'm, I'm looking forward to today's video. And in all seriousness, Vince is a genius. And I'm sure a lot of the writers are intelligent. It's not that they're not intelligent. It's that they do not care about what the so-called vocal minority thinks. They don't care what we think or what other people that rant on the internet think. They are going to do whatever they feel like doing. So it's not a matter of intelligence or not. And I also think, as far as the writing goes, I know we're already talking about this before we even get started, but the thing is with Braun Strowman and that heel turn is that I don't think they thought this out very well. With WWE booking, they just... they book week to week, and they figured, okay, we need an opponent now for Roman Reigns after SummerSlam. We really don't have anybody because we've done such a lousy job of building up our heels. Oh, crap, we better turn Braun Strowman heels so Roman has somebody to feud with for the next several months. So anyways, Keep I'm going. Sure That's what we're starting with, Aaron. All right. You, you read the notes. Keep going. Keep going. Well, I've, I've said my piece on it already, but I feel like – this should have been thought out a lot better. I think that there should have been a plan, and at the very least, WWE, if they were hell-bent on keeping Roman Reigns a babyface, they should have built up somebody as a credible heel other than Braun Strowman. Strowman's like the absolute worst choice for all the reasons that we have talked about on social media, that graphic that TJS posted. Braun Strowman was the hottest act in WWE, arguably, even more so than Roman Reigns, and some people are saying... I, I've seen people say that Braun Strowman is not marketable, which I think is just a complete joke, that idea, uh, with all due respect to the person that said that. But TJS, I know you posted that graphic, so what would you like to add to this whole thing and your overall thoughts on Braun Strowman going heel on this past Monday's Raw? Take it away. Well, uh, you said it, Darren. Um, Braun Strowman not marketable? Are you kidding me? It's like you said, if Braun Strowman goes on a talk show, the guy is six foot eight. He's close to 400 pounds. And uh, the way that people look at wrestling is they think that it's all fake and, and whatever. But if you look at Braun Strowman, that guy looks like a champion. Go back to the Hulk Hogan era when you had Hogan. Um, he had the catchphrase, you know, eat your vitamins, uh, say your prayers. He had the look which Braun also has, along with the catchphrase, the mic skills. Braun has those. The kids love him. Like, I, I don't get it. Uh, like you said, Braun is super marketable. The get these hands thing is very over. And uh, I don't remember the last time that Braun Strowman got booed. But uh, meanwhile, we have uh, Roman Reigns still being pushed as the top babyface when S.H.I.E.L.D. could have turned heel. And that would have been great because, you know, you have the Giant versus the three other people and they're, they're ganging up on Braun. But, no, they turned Braun heel and now we're getting the exact same feud that we got uh, not even two years ago with heel Braun and babyface Roman. This time there's a title involved. Not a fan of it whatsoever. Uh, I think Braun Strowman should be the guy. I think he was the one that should have beaten Lesnar. But it's Vince McMahon. And here we are. Greg? 
Do you think any of us are jumping the gun on this because it just happened? Do you think we're trying to are, – are we overbooking ourselves on this? And I'm not trying to steal Virtue's Thunder by, like, supporting Reigns as a babyface and Braun as a heel. But this is one week in defense of the um, – idea of Braun should be a babyface. I do think it is a little strange for his character to align with Ziggler and Drew just because of the monster mentality. I almost had him like as a stone cold type of don't trust anybody type person. But I, I do understand it in the vein of, you know, he does need some help against the shield. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted on this. I want to see where it goes rather than bury it after it immediately happens. I'm trying to give things a chance, as opposed to being like, oh, this is terrible, this is the worst thing they've ever done, right. fire road dog, etc. cetera. You know? Okay. Oh. Well, oh. It, Aaron let, first. Let me say what I wanted to say real quick. The problem with giving it the benefit of the doubt is people say this all the time. Look at Jinder Mahal. People say, oh, you're too quick to judge it. Let's see how it plays out. That is the excuse. That is the WWE apologist excuse every single time. They say, give it a chance. Let's see how it plays out. They said the same thing about Sasha and Bailey. Let's see how this plays out. And every time we're disappointed. So we really don't have a good reason to want to be able to give this a chance based on the track record of WWE, Greg? In that same breath, I mean, look at the stuff that we that started out that was like, oh, why are they doing this? This is going to suck. And it ended up being some of the most entertaining parts of the show. Like the I, bar. Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, when they first started teaming together, it's like, why is Kevin Owens in a tag team with Chris Jericho? They don't need each other. And they ended up having a great storyline for several months. So oh. what's up, TJS? I I was thinking about WrestleMania when Braun Strowman picked Nicholas as his tag team partner. And, uh, I mean, that made the bar look like a joke. So why does Strowman need a partner now when he's facing the Shield instead of, you know, when right. there was a, actually a title match against the bar who broke the New Day's uh, – or who ended the record-setting reign of the New Day? And why did Braun Strowman – say that he's going to cash in at Hell in a Cell. He's a heel now, so why wouldn't he just cash in after he laid out the entire shield at the end of Raw? You're asking and, too and, many questions, man. Too many questions. But also, you, you forgot to mention that Braun Strowman came to Roman Reigns' aid back in April. I guess we're supposed to totally forget about that. And then next thing we know, um, Strowman is saying, I don't like you, Roman, just completely out of the blue again. So Apparently, he went from hating Roman to being okay with him. And then for some completely random reason doesn't like the guy again um so yeah big it, it just goes to show that this was likely thrown together last minute they did not have a good solid heel to feud with roman reigns originally it was booked to be roman reigns versus kevin owens at hell in a cell that's what was being advertised but owens was made to look like a complete fool and now wwe's having to do this angle where he's quitting to try and salvage his character uh so virtue i know you've been you've been listening to us so your thoughts on all this? My silence speaks volumes because five minutes go by, all three of you had a lot to say about this angle that you claim the WWE doesn't care about and just threw together because they don't know who they want to be heel. But yet everybody's talking about it, bitching and complaining, tweeting, social media. Maybe, maybe, maybe Vince McMahon and company don't, in their eyes, they don't have heels and baby faces anymore. So they're looking at it like, well, uh, who cares what the fans think? We don't have heels and baby faces. Let's just get Braun two guys to equal the shield and number. So I wanted Braun to cash in the the normal way after someone's beat up at the end of SummerSlam and for him to win the universal title from Roman after Roman beat Brock. That's what I wanted, and Braun would be our champion right now. We didn't get that. And now he's chasing... The thing is, Vince Russo said, this was interesting. He's like, so when the Shield reunited and triple powerbombed Braun at the end of Raw last week, they basically didn't even do anything on this Raw regarding that angle until the main event, which was weird. The fact that Braun just stood there and looked at Roman and they set it up that way, he's like, you can tell WWE just doesn't care how these guys are per perceived because the way they went, they left hot last week on Raw with the Shield, 
And then they didn't even care about it until the last five minutes of Raw. And what happened? Just that he raised their arms, right? And they beat. And, and think about this. Why didn't Ambrose and Rollins come out at the same time? Did I miss that correctly? Did one come out first, then the other? So yeah. they Maybe their locker the same... room was on the other side of the building, like Paige <laughs> yeah. did her office. So, there, I mean, we can nitpick. There's so many issues that are going on here. And, Greg, to your point, maybe Braun's using these two guys. And maybe when this feud is over, he'll go right back to being babyface Braun. We we don't know. I mean, he has to do more heel things. Oh, we so say heel he'll be turn. like Big we Show. Say, he'll we, be like Big Show. So he just goes back and forth every week to the point where nobody they cares do. about him. <laughs> well, let's see. I didn't say every week. We're talking when this feud is over. Maybe when he doesn't need the numbers against the Shield, what if they revert Braun? Why does he need the numbers against the Shield? That's WWE's eyes because that's what they do. Does he really? No. It should be a three-on-one. They, but and, see, they don't want to discredit the Shield by having right. one monster beat three guys, right. so they put random guys with it. Remember we talked about last week? Ray Wyatt, what's yeah. he doing? Bring Luke Harper over, and of course they don't want to. And, and you know that. what? If they don't care about who's the babyface or who's the heel, why not do that then? Because the fans would cheer for the Wide Family. Some of them would cheer for Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Kevin Owens would have been a good choice. Well, he's after a heel, he I but, quit. but after he said I if quit, WWE that would have did been not good. care, and they're going to let people decide who they want to cheer or boo for, then the Wide Family would have made way more sense. Braun Strowman is purposely aligning with the heels, and on Raw this week, it was designed to make you feel sympathetic towards Reigns. You heard the announcers and everything, and they're saying, why would Braun do this? They, it reminded me of, of Jim Ross's reaction when Austin turned heel. That's yep. what, it's, I feel like they were trying to emulate that. Yep, exactly. It was ridiculous. But if Braun was truly heel, why didn't he just hit Reigns in the back of the head with the briefcase and cash in the dirty heel? That's light? what I was wondering. See what I mean? So, like, Greg, I kind of agree with you. We might have to see this thing play out a little bit longer. And if he ends up being a cliche heel with... Ziggler and McIntyre, then, you know, we can bring this back up in four weeks. I don't know. Anybody uh, else? I, I just don't think, and, and this goes back to, like, a random segment on Raw in April when Strowman had beaten Reigns up and, like, tipped over the ambulance. And Angle said that he was going to face Reigns at the next pay-per-view. And Strowman was like, what? And I'm like, that is so out of character. It doesn't make sense. Why would he be upset about that? He flipped over a freaking ambulance. Why would he be scared of one one dude? Like, why? It, it, it's it, it, the character development. I think is the thing that bothers. Well, the thing is, WWE is marketing towards kids. It's a kids show, and we are adults here talking about a kids show, trying to find logic in a kids show. What is wrong with us? Uh, lots. Well, uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse had logic. I mean, like, right? Was that a kid show? By the way, who misses Saturday morning cartoons and the good lineup they used to have back in the day? And even TGI Friday on Friday, man, I'm telling you what, we watch wrestling 20 hours a week. <laughs> All right. Well, there was a few things that happened on Raw that piqued my interest this week. Um, let's talk about something that really didn't happen on Raw. It happened on social media. Everybody remembers Jason Sensation back from the uh, Nation of Domination DX parody days. Uh, he did some fantastic impersonations. He actually was a roadie, I think, a little bit for WWE. Probably helped set up the ring. But you know, I don't think he really became a huge comedian, maybe like he thought he would, being on a big show like that back in the 90s with high ratings. And he's been a little quirky. I follow him on Twitter. I, I've seen him do some weird things. But he nails the wrestling impersonations. What's everybody's thoughts on bad comedy? Because to me, that's what happened with this I have a gun I'm, I'm in Raw, I snuck it in through security, and I'm going to blow my brains out on TV. And then he said it was a joke. Bad comedy in 2018 like that just doesn't work. Aaron, what's your thoughts, man? Well, as I said on No DQ Live, I think it, it was a bad joke in any time period. doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago or right now. I just don't think that's something you should be joking around about. And especially now with all the the things going on with gun shootings. It's just not the time to be making a joke like that when people are already on edge as it is. So uh, the guy did apologize and I feel bad for him. I hope he gets some help. I was a big fan of the DX skit with the Nation parody and the Corporation parody. I mean, Jason Sensation's a really talented guy and I, I feel bad that um, he's having whatever issues he's having right now. TJS, your thoughts on it? Uh, you said it best, Aaron. <clears throat> and um, 
the key to comedy is timing. And like you said, um, it, it's never a good time to make this joke, especially on the heels of a shooting in Florida. That yeah. you know, and I mean, I, I'm not going to get political here, but I just think that it it, it wasn't something to joke about. Uh, suicide is a very serious matter, and you know, I'm sure that if people in the arena knew about this, they probably felt you know threatened because if somebody got a gun past security, who's to say that they won't just shoot anybody? Um, it's very sad, and uh, I'm glad. Uh, I I don't know how to word this, but I'm glad that it was a joke, and that he didn't actually kill himself. Um, like you said, I hope that he gets the help that he needs. And um, I don't know. An apology really uh, doesn't fix this. Greg, what do you think? You know, death is not something that should be joked about in any circumstance whatsoever because – I mean, people have families, people have people that care about them, and you know, to joke about somebody's death when there are people who care about them is just completely awful, completely wrong in any sense of the imagination. And like you said, we're not going to get political because that just lights another firestorm, for lack of a better term. Um, the fact that Jason Sensation did this shows that he needs some like psychological help um, which he needs to get as soon as possible because you don't joke about that. You don't joke about potentially putting other people in harm's way or having people who are just going to go to a show and have a fun time um, remember that for the rest of their life. Like, hey, you know, here's a five-year-old, a seven-year-old watching Raw, watching Roman Reigns in the ring, and then this guy next to him shoots himself and kills himself. Like, what are they going to remember about that? They're going to remember yep. that and be traumatized for the rest of their life. I mean, you, you, you just do not do that. So, so Jason, I hope I, if you even watch this, like, I hope you get the help you need, you know, seek help as soon as you can. And hopefully you can overcome whatever you're overcome, whatever you need to overcome. And kudos to Vince Russo. Cause I saw his name throw every, everybody hates him. Right. But he kind of got in contact, uh, Jason sensation and the, you know, of course the authorities were going to do it too, but, uh, it's just crazy social media this stuff blows up if we didn't have social media he probably would have never tweeted that because he wouldn't have wanted attention i mean back back in the day comedians went to clubs to be funny they didn't tweet outrageous things on social media so right. yeah i'm glad that it was a false alarm uh what else on raw you know what elias was cutting a promo and like he does he barely gets matches he doesn't get consistent feuds they're in toronto and unannounced, Trish Stratus comes out. So I got a couple questions for everybody. What'd you think of the segment? I think Elias got buried by Trish to get the evolution over. But what do you think about somebody like Trish coming on Raw and not being announced? That's a big deal. TJS, that, that's what got me the, the angriest about that is she wasn't announced. I mean, I'm all for surprises, but when you need ratings, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> here's what... What really just baffles me. Why did they announce the Alexa Bliss Trish Stratus match like a week before this happened? Why not just have Trish Stratus interrupt Alexa Bliss instead of interrupting Elias? I, I don't get it. Like WWE just doesn't make sense to me right now. Um, and it seems like creative has nothing for Elias because he just does the same thing every week now. He just comes out, you know, shits on the crowd, and then gets interrupted or whatever, and that's it. I mean, uh, he's not really going anywhere. I don't remember the last time he had a match. He put on that barn burner with Rollins uh, at Money in the Bank, and ever since then, I just feel like he's floundering, yeah. lost in the shuffle. Um, and for Trish to not be announced, um, I kind of speculated that she would be showing up since it was in her hometown, but still, uh, I don't understand. I'm just tired of the cheap pop. Because Trish came out there and was like, oh, you're talking bad about my hometown. And Elias They announced said, HBK for next week, which, <laughs> you know, he's not a normal regular. That's it's true. Just, they're, they're inconsistent with that type of stuff. Maybe the Trish thing was a last minute thing. I don't know. Um, Aaron? Well, I, I thought Trish was going to be there just because it made logical sense. So at least she was there. Yeah, maybe it would have been a better idea to announce her in advance, but... Yeah, things just happen completely random sometimes, and 
There's no rhyme or reason. As far as Elias goes, yeah, I, I look back at Money in the Bank, and I think I think he would have been better off with the IC title than Seth Rollins. I don't think Seth Rollins needs it. I don't think Ziggler was really the right guy to have the title at this stage of the game. I think Elias could have really benefited from having an IC title run. That's just my take on it. Uh, Greg, your thoughts on it? You know, part of me wonders if Elias is hurt and they're just not saying anything, if that's the reason why he's not having matches and he, he, they want to keep him on TV just to stay relevant. Um, I don't have a problem with surprises. The fact that Trish wasn't announced, not a big deal to me. I mean, she came out, yes, she interrupted Elias, tried to get Evolution over, and Elias got some good digs. You know, she, ha she had the TV time. I'm, I'm not complaining. I don't have a problem with this segment. Because, let's face it, in the grand scheme of things, is this going to be a super memorable segment that everybody's going to look back in 15 years and be like, hey, remember that time Trish interrupted Elias? It's not one of those. It's not one of those classics that you're going to remember. So, in my opinion, not that big a deal. I don't think Elias is hurt because he wrestled uh, – who's the guy that loses all the time? Hawkins. Rude. He wrestled Hawkins. <laughs> well, yeah, we could name about right, 10 right? wrestlers, but – uh, the one that's Owen 200 and something. Yeah, Kurt Hawkins. He wrestled him last week on Raw. But, yeah, Elias is just a uh, filler gimmick for Raw with the guitar. And he'll get interrupted. He'll be out there for Trish and the, the women to come out and cut their Evolution promo. And I've accepted that until they've done something different. I like the guy. I think he could be good. Aaron, I agree. He should be the Intercontinental Champion right now. Well, you know what's funny? Like, I, I – I was kind of like iffy about Elias, like if I if I felt like he could really be a big star or not. And then as soon as I started to get sold on him, that's when WWE pretty much gave up on really giving. So him they have to watch NoDQ.com, just like Rusev Day. They have to watch you there. They yeah, have somebody. Greg. Thanks a lot. You, you need to quit liking people when other people like them, Aaron. It's all your fault. Damn it's it. All my fault. Yep. <sighs> Throw you down the hill again. <sighs> Kevin Owens. So we had a, a heck of a match on Raw, uh, pay-per-view worthy, or, you know, WWE Network event worthy with Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. That, I loved how he got heat. He came out, obviously, everybody knows KO's from Canada. They were in Toronto. Once he started speaking French-Canadian, because, you know, from Montreal, that crowd turned on him. I loved it. He got the heat. They set up the match. It was a fantastic match. All the indie wrestling fans that liked that, you were given a treat. Then afterwards, he sat in the chair from commercial break, and then he said, I quit. Walked away. So with speculations going, you know, what's he going to do? Is, is he going to become a Paul Heyman guy? What's everyone's thoughts? What's next for Kevin Owens with this? Uh, Aaron, you mentioned he has a new deal, right? So he's definitely staying with WWE. Yeah, yeah it's all so, part of an angle. Um, and, you know, and this is where... We really have nothing else to talk about other than fantasy book Kevin Owens. What do you think is going to happen and thoughts on the match? Well, I, I, I've heard some speculation about maybe Paul Heyman possibly aligning with Kevin Owens and Owens maybe drops a little bit of weight, puts on a little bit more muscle, comes back with a slightly altered look with a, a new, just a, a new coat of paint with Paul Heyman as his mouthpiece and Maybe that's a way that Kevin Owens can be reinvented in WWE. I'd like to see it. I mean, at this stage of the game, I think after the damage that was done uh, with the Strowman program, I think maybe changing up Owens a little bit is the right thing for business and give him a fresh start when he comes back. Maybe keep him off TV for a month or two and then bring him back with Paul Heyman. That's what I would like to see, at least. Um, and yeah, that was a great, a great dig at Montreal. And what was the other line about the, the hockey team, the Raptors? Was that the Iconics that said that? Yeah, that he did it again. Smackdown. What? Oh, that was on SmackDown. Okay. Did someone on on WWE actually call the hockey team Raptors, or did Aaron Riff just say Raptors? I did. What, Aaron not? doesn't watch sports. Okay. He just called the hockey Raptors. team the Raptors. Everybody knows Is it the Maple Leafs? Leafs? What, yeah. what, yeah. what, what the are they team. then? If they're not hockey, what are they? Basketball. basketball. Wait, Canada what? has basketball not... teams? Oh boy! I thought hockey yes, the was Toronto really Raptors are the Canada. NBA team. Toronto Raptors are the NBA team. Aaron, a history lesson here for you. I, didn't Maple know I thought NBA either. was just United States. The Maple Leaves are the hockey team. The Blue Jays and are the baseball Greg is team. Just like shaking his head. I didn't right. know about this either, so don't feel bad, Aaron. Remember, wow. I'm the same guy that thought Lawrence Taylor played for the Atlanta Braves. 
Just saying. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's that's going back a few seasons of wrestling, wrestling trivia, trivia challenge. challenge. Yeah. Okay, Greg, so I just made myself on, look like a, a complete sports fool. Whatever. That's all right. Yeah, Greg, so. thoughts on KO? Uh, what, what do you think of that match? Do you think it's good to have matches like that on Raw, or should they save that for the big events? You know, it, it's good to have matches like that on Raw because if you just save those matches for the pay-per-views, network specials, whatever the case is, then why go to Raw? Why go to SmackDown if you're not going to have a solid match? I mean, you got to entertain that crowd for three hours. You put on a solid match like Owens and Rollins did, then, you know, you keep that crowd invested in the rest of the show. So, yeah, having a match like that on the show, even if it's just one a night, I think that works. Um, as far as Owens goes, I mean, Aaron hit it right on the head. He needs some something to save face for him. Um, after that Strowman program, because he looked like a complete idiot, even though he won the cage match. Uh, he, he needs something to save himself, whether it's coming back with Heyman, whether it's a babyface turn after Strowman turned heel now, so why not flip-flop him and make Owens the babyface and make him like hulk up on Strowman or something and make Strowman look, cower a little bit, be like, where did this come from? Where was this during our feud? I, I, I don't know. But Owens needs something because really since WrestleMania, Owens has been booked terribly. Yeah. Since, since the whole Shane and Daniel Bryan feud, it, it's been awful for them. Uh, the loss of Sami Zayn to injury didn't really help, but they were kind of like drifting apart a little bit. Um, so, so Owens needs something fresh and time off of the shows, I think will help him. Maybe he'll come back at like Survivor Series or something or after – but he, he definitely needs the time off. TJ is. He, he, TJ is uh, like, I wanted to ask you this. Do you think Owens has been reliant, the character, has been reliant on a partner, Chris Jericho, Sami Zayn, and then all of a sudden he really didn't have one? You think that's affected it a little bit? Yeah, um, I, I think so. And uh, he even mentioned that in the promo, which I, I liked that because it at least gave a reason for him getting squashed by Braun. Um, I will say that um, the match between Rollins and Owens was incredible. It was really good. And uh, Kevin Owens' body language after that match, his facial expressions, it, you know, he just looked so distraught, and uh, it was believable. Um, I kind of wish that the news didn't break about him signing that five-year deal um, because that would, you know, it's hard to... Um, to believe this angle now, but uh, I think that Owens needs a little bit of time off, and I think that he should come back as the monster heel that he was in NXT, uh, and that can be your challenger for Reigns right there. Uh, I think it would be good, and uh, I agree with you guys. Uh, ever since Owens has come to Raw, you know, he's been a joke, uh, and I, there's not much else to say about it. I just hope that he comes back, and I'm not sure about the whole Paul Heyman thing, because does Owens really need a mouthpiece? I mean, he's really good on the mic as it is, so I don't know if Paul Heyman would be the best fit for him, Aaron. Well, I just think any change is good change, and if Paul Heyman's going to align with somebody, I think Owens would be a, a decent choice. I mean, there's a lot of guys that can talk, but I think Heyman picking Owens as the guy to represent, I think that that elevates Owens, the fact that Heyman sees him as a top guy. You know, Heyman is, that Heyman dust is being uh, put on Kevin Owens, and I think that that could help Owens, just being associated with Paul Heyman. But then again, didn't really work for, for Curtis Axel and Ryback, did it? Right. Well, speaking really. of like, yeah, and Braun Strowman with the get these hands thing, it was so Ryback feed me more a little bit. That reminded me of hey, that. You so, know what? I, real quick, um, doesn't this yeah. Braun Strowman heel turn remind you of when Ryback turned heel because WWE did not want to turn Cena, so they turned Ryback instead? Doesn't it feel like the yep, same yep. thing? That's what they do. And if anything needs a fresh coat of paint, it's creative. Yeah. Vince McMahon. And uh, this would have been fantastic. Leave the shield as kind of heels, you know, or make you think they're heels. Oh, but Roman's in there, so of course they're not going to go. You could have kept Braun Baby, and when Owens said he quit, you could have had Owens, who just got beat up in a program by Strowman, have him come out to be turn face and be the first guy to join Braun. Yeah. They can't, they can't even look at that. They can't even get that. That would yeah, have been something... Right? 
Yeah, that's what I said last week, that uh, Owens could finally become friends with Strowman. That would at least be something. Yeah, know? and it, and it could have felt a little organic maybe too because you wouldn't have expected that after he got beat up by him. Right. Yep. You know, you become friends with the bully on the playground. And the funny thing is Kevin Owens kind of used to be a bully too. So even though the size difference, God, that could have been a good tandem there. But that's WWE for you. All right, uh, so here's let's talk about the Hell in the Cell. So we got two Hell in the Cell matches coming up. Obviously, Braun Strowman cashed in his briefcase, handed it to the Commissioner Corbin, which Aaron, you know that Aaron Greg, we've talked about that to keep Braun protected. He's not going to sneak up from somebody. He's going to cash it in. But it felt so lackluster. I don't know why. Yeah. It's going to be in the Hell in the Cell versus Roman, and then also Jeff Hardy. Just to have Jeff Hardy in a cell against Randy Orton. And yes, we know it's personal, it's heated. But you got AJ and Joe that's supposed to be personal and heated. The Raw match is for the Universal title. The SmackDown match, nothing on the line. I, I They should have had Joe and AJ. I'm sorry, Jeff and Randy, you could have still had a great match and got sadistic. You didn't need the cage. They just want Jeff Hardy to have more highlights. But what... The biggest thing, guys, what stands out about this, there's two male Hell in a Cell matches. Are, are, there, are they not doing female Hell in a Cell matches? If not, so much for evolution to put the females equal with the men. Greg, what's your thoughts on that? I have a feeling they're not going to do that. I disagree. I think that it's going to get to the point where they announce Becky and Charlotte is going to be inside Hell in a Cell. But you know what? To be honest, the way that Hell in a Cell is being booked and all the personal rivalries that are happening, I kind of wish they'd lock down this and make every match in Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Honestly, because, I mean, you're having a lot of repeat feuds. You're having a lot of personal rivalries, like, come into a boil. Why not just put every single match yeah. in Hell in a Cell? I, I know because lockdown kind of killed the concept of a steel cage match a little bit. But in the same breath, it's like, why don't you just have a bunch more matches in Hell in a Cell? I mean, you only do the structure once a year, so why not? Why don't you just stop doing the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view period and then do a Cell match when the situation calls for it? That's what I would like to see personally. That's not see, hard. I, I, I agree with that because I think the gimmick pay-per-views, like having a pay-per-view every year with the same match gets a little boring except the Royal Rumble. Because the Royal Rumble makes sense because there's always yeah. something on the line and there's all, every single Rumble match is different. But if you do like the Hell in a Cell, the TLC, the Elimination Chamber, uh, whatever other matches they come up with that fit that bill, it, it kind of takes away the luster because then you have the pay-per-view. You expect, okay, at least one or two or seven matches are going to be in Hell in a Cell. So, you know, why not? It, it's... Just, I don't know what they're going to do. I feel like if you did another gimmick match for AJ and Joe, it'd be overkill. Because yeah. you put that one in Hell in a Cell with how personal that one's getting with Joe talking about AJ's family. But I don't know. Aaron, do you, do you have anything else to add? Well, I think two is enough. I think doing more is overkill. I'm not a fan of doing an all-cage match pay-per-view. Um, as far as which two matches, you know... That's definitely debatable. I did do a poll on No DQ about which match people would like to see contested inside Hell in a Cell, and I could tell you the results right here. Uh, by far, the match people most wanted to see inside the cell was AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Out of five choices, that had half of the votes. Next was Charlotte. Next, you know, you just mentioned it. Charlotte and Becky Lynch was actually in second. Third was Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Fourth was Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy. And just for uh, poops and giggles, I threw the mixed tag team match on there with Brian and Bree against uh, The Miz and Maurice, which was dead last. So there you go. The fans, at least on ODQ, wanted to see AJ and Joe. And I felt like that, that really was the best choice. But if Jeff Hardy wants to do Hell in a Cell, then he's going to be doing Hell in a Cell. And, uh, you know, they're going to... They got to have one on the Raw brand, so pretty much it has to be Reigns versus Strowman on Raw. So it is what it is, and uh, I think it's a shame for Joe and AJ. I don't know what they're going to do for this next match. And by the way, they have another match coming up at Super Showdown, too, which is just completely random. Uh, makes no sense because if AJ Styles wins, 
Why are they even doing a third match? Why are they announcing it in advance when Joe could just, in storyline, get his ass kicked by AJ Styles? It makes no sense whatsoever, storyline-wise. And um, how do you up the ante with these matches now? What do you do next? This is getting very personal. So you got to have something, right? If they just have a normal match at Hell in a Cell, uh, it kind of just doesn't feel right. I mean, TJS or Greg, did you want to add something? I wanted to add something. I mean, this is also a problem with the WWE trying to promote three pay-per-views at the same time. They're oh. trying to promote Hell in a Cell. They're trying to promote the Super Showdown in Australia. And they're trying to promote Evolution yeah. all in the same time. It's like one at a time. You know, you know, pick your battles. You, Hell in a Cell's first, and then Super Showdown, and then Evolution. And then Survivor Series after that. So, you know, you're not trying to promote the Rumble and WrestleMania at the same time. Why are you trying to promote these three at the same time? I know they're all coming up in a pretty short span, but pick one. Focus on Hell in a Cell. Don't worry about the Australia show because people will be there because you don't do shows in Australia very often. Just focus on Hell in a Cell first, my opinion. TJS? So here's the thing about, um, about the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. You've got three big matches. You've got Strowman versus Reigns for the Universal title. Uh, it makes sense to put that in Hell in a Cell since, you know, you don't want the Shield to get involved. Yeah, but at right. the same time, could, yeah, um, I mean, they're obviously going to still get involved. But instead of making that a Hell in a Cell match, why not just have Corbin ban them from ringside? You have Reigns as the baby face, Corbin as the heel authority figure, just say that they're banned from ringside. That way... You can do Joe and AJ inside the cell, which makes sense since it's a personal feud. You have uh, Joe going to AJ's house next week, apparently. So hopefully we get like the whole Brian Pillman, Steve Austin thing, like Aaron said. Um, It'll be more AJ's like the have, Triple H, Randy Orton. One yeah, I mean, I doubt AJ is going to have like a gun or something. But uh, uh, and then I think. I think that Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton needs to be in Hell in a Cell because we have reasons to care about uh, AJ versus Joe because it's for the title, and Roman versus Strowman is for the title, but Jeff and uh, Randy, that's just kind of in the middle, and I feel like if that's a Hell in a Cell match, people would care about it more. It doesn't have anything on the line, so it needs that extra boost. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense, and I just wanted to add about the Hell in a Cell match, yeah, I mean, when was the last time a cage match actually prevented people from interfering? And by the way, I could have sworn that there was a stipulation just a couple months ago where somebody was banned from ringside and they just blatantly interfered anyways and there were no repercussions or nothing. I don't remember the match, but it was like within the past six months. It was probably like Ellsworth that. and Carmella. That was probably it, too. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Because the, cause the shark cage was supposed to prevent Ellsworth from interfering and obviously yeah. Yeah. this is typical WWE so whether or not Becky and Charlotte get a cell match which they should they're they're gonna have Jeff and Randy probably kick off the, not the kickoff but the lead off the show with the hot opener that's gonna be the first cage match so they can have a gap between the two big Hell in a Cell matches because we know Roman and Braun's going on last and we know AJ and, and uh AJ and Joe will go in there right in the middle, Daddy. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I, that's just, I don't know. It's just crazy. Speaking of Super Showdown from Down Under, they are really, really, really hyping up this Undertaker and Triple H thing. So, all right, we, we know WWE lies with their slogan. The Rock and Cena, <laughs> once in a lifetime. What happened the following year? Um, end of an era. Now, Sean has stuck to his guns. He has not wrestled since he lost to The Undertaker. But Triple H, even though he didn't wrestle The Undertaker until this upcoming show, and Undertaker have both wrestled. So we, they lied to us again, and Triple H tried to cover it in that promo a couple weeks ago. So, Aaron, you're shaking your head. Like, it, this feels, it's going to be an 80,000-seat venue, right, stadium. So it's a big deal. It's basically like a greatest Royal Rumble. Let's just make a big event, put it on the network. Let's have mini WrestleManias now where absolutely nothing happens during them. And what are we getting? Taker and Triple H. And they're making it a big deal. Like, it's a bigger deal than anything going on right now for the main younger stars. That's what I'm getting out of it. They're, they're hyping Shawn Michaels coming in next week to cut a promo on it. Aaron? 
Well, what's funny about this is that my feeling is the match is going to be basically like John Cena and Triple H. It's going to be a glorified house show match. They're doing yep. all this hype, all this build up for a match that will probably just have the quality of your average house show match, which I just find to be absolutely hysterical. Um, but I am looking forward to it. It is in Australia, so I think it'll have a better vibe than the Saudi Arabia show. And by the way, it looks like they're doing another Saudi Arabia show in November. Um, so we got more of that to come. whoop de freaking do um, So yeah, I, I am looking forward to the Australia Super Show. I think the crowd heat will be better, and that'll make it more of a fun show. But I still think it's going to be a glorified house show in a, in a large stadium, just the way I see it. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe they'll do some crazy stuff on that show. But who knows? Uh, TJS, your thoughts on it? Well, this whole show uh, seems like there's going to be no title matches. I mean, you've got your Universal Champion uh, in a six-man tag. Along with your Intercontinental Champion, you've got your Raw Women's Champion in a six-man tag. Or in a six-woman tag, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on. And obviously, Triple H and Undertaker is headlining. Um, do you, I don't understand why. Uh, is that show sold out? I don't know exactly how many tickets have been sold, but I'm thinking they're going to have the place full by the time the, the pay-per-view airs or event, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it makes me wonder if uh, they're struggling to sell tickets. I doubt it, but, I mean, what is it, a 60,000-seat arena? Yeah, hey, I, uh, think, and I think they're going to... Oh, uh-oh, we just lost Greg Cherry. Greg Cherry's like, you know what, I'm done talking keep, about... Keep on, keep on talking. We'll cover uh, until he's back. Yeah, uh, like I said... Um, I think uh, maybe they're struggling to sell the tickets. I don't know. But you know Triple H likes those long matches, and I have a feeling that's what we're going to get. Uh, I think – but is, the question is, is Undertaker really going to go that long? Uh, it makes me wonder, do you guys think that this is going to be both of their last matches? It's never – and by the way, Greg just messaged me power out. Right. So we got to give him a couple minutes. But you know what? In, in, until you – wrestlers pass away there's very few that hold to it you're never done wrestling because now Shawn michaels has stuck to his guns right edge when you have an injury that you can't come back from edge obviously stuck but if most wrestlers had their way an undertaker you know can get back into shape triple h stays in great shape they just don't want to let it go i mean it'd be like a person working a nine to five for 40 years and retiring at 65 these wrestlers start getting old in their 40s but they want to keep doing it part time, this and that. And again, it could be a lot with Vince McMahon, where he loves his older generation stars that carried him through the 90s. And maybe he doesn't want to let them go. And he's like, we got to give them Triple H and Undertaker again. Yeah, you because know? he can't build new stars. That's the problem. And I think that's a, I think that's contingent to he's afraid to build new stars. This is a, a argument I have with guys like Tito Wrestling. He it's he doesn't want people to become bigger than the WWE like Cena. We've talked about this, like Brock Lesnar, because then it's hard to, the Rock, because then it's hard to get him back. And when you do bring him back, it costs you a lot of money. Yeah. He likes to control the Braun Strowmans, the Roman Reigns, really to make them feel inferior, you know, inferior or whatever the term is, because it's like all they can do is WWE. If it wasn't for WWE, what would you do? He's not letting these guys become larger than life. That's in my opinion. Braun Strowman is a perfect example of that. That guy should be pushed through the moon larger than life, but it's like every time he gets to that potential, something happens like the, the heel turn, right? They got to bring him got? back down a little bit. He's getting too big. Ask Cody what you do without WWE. Well, he's doing okay, but that you got to travel a lot, you know, and if Cody is making seven figures outside of WWE, you know, kudos to him, but. It's like Vito used to say, small fish, small pond, small fish, big pond, or whatever. Right, Aaron? Is it the saying like that? It, it works for some people, but it doesn't work for others. Well, I think Jericho is doing good without WWE, too. I mean, he's doing the New Japan stuff. He has Fozzy. So, I mean. Yeah, but on the indie scene, you know, if you, can, if you can work, you're in pretty good shape to make a lot of money. But you look at somebody like Ryback, he hasn't really done much since leaving WWE, so... I, I, I would find it hard to believe that Strowman could not be a big star somewhere else just because he's just such an enigma. You know, the guy is a freak of nature. 
Um, you would think a company that was even remotely uh, competent would be able to utilize him and make him a huge star. If they can afford him, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that he wouldn't be cheap. Right. Well, yeah, that, and that might be an issue with Ryback, too. Maybe Ryback's, Ryback's asking price is too high. Um, I think somebody could have could have done something with Ryback, maybe even Impact Wrestling. But then again, uh, the problem with Impact is their whole reputation has been on just signing former yep. WWE talent instead of making their own homegrown stars. And, and you know what, it's, Aaron, we were just talking about The Undertaker. I, I don't know why I was thinking this, and Greg's power went out. Like, seriously? Like, <laughs> play off of that, WWE. Make The Undertaker. Like, and the thing is... Do you think we're going to see The Undertaker do any promos before this event? Or is it just going to be Triple H doing it and Shawn um, Michaels? I think we might you know, see him. I, I, I would not be shocked if he does make an appearance. You know, I believe he's going to be backstage at Raw next week, so I would not rule out next week. They might save him for two weeks or right after Hell in a Cell, but I think there's a decent chance we'll see him before the event. Look well, we will time, Tron. Yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. And if Greg comes back, he can end up, if he had anything else to say about that match. But let's move on. I did want to talk about something from SmackDown a little bit. Um, you know, we, we've had this Becky Lynch and Charlotte feud and what, you know, baby face and heel and this and that. But I want to, I don't really want to talk about that. I want to talk about Miz and his wife, Maurice, and Daniel Bryan and Bree. Now, interestingly enough, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, there's no news out there that Brian has resigned a contract yet, right? Right. Gosh, they need to make something where his career, his WWE career is threatened in a match. Those are the type of stakes I want. We're talking about stakes, right? Have something where the fan, especially if there's no leak of him having a contract or not having a contract. What do you think about these mixed tag matches like this? To me, this screams Bree and Brian are winning, just like Cena and Nikki. Right. beat them at WrestleMania. So it's like, are you serious? To me, it's like a filler match. But at least Miz is finally starting to get some heat. TJS, what's your thoughts on this scenario? Like, could it be a better feud? Are they just kind of mailing it in here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was a mistake to get the wives involved. I think it should have just stayed between Brian and Miz. Uh, I think because the beef was between those two, it doesn't really make sense to bring Bree and Maurice into this. And um, I don't really enjoy mixed tag team matches. Uh, I did like the one at WrestleMania with Ronda, Kurt, Triple H, and Stephanie. But uh, the whole John Cena and Nikki versus Maurice and Miz, I didn't care for. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I really think that Daniel Bryan versus Miz should have just been inside Hell in a Cell. That would make the most sense out of any of these since it was you know eight years in the making. And uh, not sure why we're getting this match because The Miz didn't win at SummerSlam decisively. So wouldn't it make more sense to just have a one-on-one? -on -one? I guess we're getting that at Super Showdown, but that match really doesn't count. I'm sure we'll get another one after that. Uh, I don't know. The 50-50 booking, uh, I guess that's what we're going to get. Aaron? Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't have a problem with the match. I guess it's being done because the Bella Twins are back and WWE wants to take advantage of them being back and... I, I'm not sure if Brian and Bree have ever teamed up on a pay-per-view before. This might be the first. Unfortunately, Greg Cherry's not here because of his power outage, so we cannot ask him if uh, they had teamed up before. I don't remember them teaming up before. So this is kind of an idea that it's there. You could take advantage of it. Maurice interfered at SummerSlam, and that's how you got Bree involved. You set that up. I'm okay with it, and now they're doing the Super Show match, which... Um, apparently there's the stipulation that the winner will get a future WWE championship opportunity. Maybe the Miz Ooh. wins. Maybe the Miz. I think so. I maybe think the, so. Maybe the Miz beats Brian and then the Miz wins the WWE title at the Royal Rumble after AJ breaks the record and then Daniel Bryan wins the Rumble and you have. Dude, that would be great for the Miz to win. To get even if it's dirty who finishes, but for the Miz to keep going over Brian, whether it was the the last match they had, the mixed tag team match, but the Miz keeps going over like a heel supposed to build heat, build heat, make Brian chase, and then Aaron, like you suggested, I've actually suggested this in the past. Let's make that mania one of the mania main events next year. Oh, he's alive. Yeah, I'm Miz. Greg, he's back, and it was supposed to be uh, TJS was worried about storms in his area and power yeah. going out. <laughs> yeah, I had a freaking power at it. Uh, Greg, we were, we were talking about Miz and Maurice versus uh, Brian and Bree, and Aaron just suggested, 
have Miz keep going over Brian and Brian, Ch- you know, even if it's dirty finishes, having Brian chase, chase, chase. And then Aaron just said, maybe the, you know, Miz can win the WWE title at Royal Rumble. Brian could win the Royal Rumble. And there's a main event for WrestleMania where finally then Brian goes over the Miz. <laughs> I just laugh because I, I think a main event and that would probably still be like in the middle of the card. But I mean, but people would be into that scenario. They'd pop huge for it. Um, TJS, anything else you want to say, or we'll pass it to Greg? He's got some catching up to do. Uh, well, no, I, I think I'm good to go. Greg, go ahead. All right. Um, if they do have Miz and Maurice go over Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella, that should be their last match until that potential match at WrestleMania. Now, if they have Brian go over, Brian and Brie go over Miz and Maurice, that probably still should be their last match against each other for a while. There's really no reason to continue this until what's the next pay per view? I, I mean, Super, Super Showdown. They're Super having another Showdown. one. The Bellas are already booked for that in a six woman tag. So there's really no reason to do Brian and Miz at Super Showdown. There, there's really no point to that. Um, what do you do? Make them teammates on the Survivor Series team then? Because I believe that's after the next pay-per-view after Evolution, the Survivor Series. Yeah. There's really no point in continuing the story after Hell in a Cell, in my opinion. So this match should be the last one against each other for a while, unless they decide to go that WWE Championship route with uh, Miz and Brian. Yeah, I mean, fair point. It's announced for Super Showdown, though, uh, Miz and Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Oh, all right. No, Winner no. gets a future WWE title. Opportunity. That's right. I forgot. I forgot that was announced. Yeah. So, so much huh? for that. <laughs> like I said, I'm not paying attention to that card because Hell in a Cell's up next. So I know like, it's it's crazy. It's it's stupid that they do that. Um, Greg, any you want to cut a promo? You want to cut a promo on the Undertaker since we were talking about his match against Triple H when your power went out? Yeah, I, I mean that's that's kind of creepy timing, but. Uh, Dead man, if you ever want a challenge, you know, I got this right here. You're going to have to try and choke slam me to get that. But hey, maybe do it. maybe uh, Greg is prepping for um, an excuse when he finally loses the title. He'll say, oh, I got a power outage right as he's about to lose the championship. Ooh. That's probably the only way somebody's going to beat me for the title ref at this rate. So. Oh, touche. Um, and speaking of the choke slam, you know, uh, we should maybe bring up this hot topic right now and see what you guys think about it. Virtue, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Trying to use the choke slam as a little transition here. It's main event time. We've done all my topics and Greg Cherry actually brought this up. So let's do it. Um, everybody knows what's this girl's name? Izzy? Izzy. Izzy. Yes. Izzy. Izzy. Okay. So she got choke slammed by a, by a wrestler in the indie scene. Uh, does anyone know the wrestler's name? No. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, work. this is done to try to get this wrestler over, and I watched it. It was soft. It was gentle. It was a good landing. I'm sure they practiced on a trampoline, but I know a lot of veteran wrestlers took a disliking to this, and I right. don't think it was because of the 12-year-old, right? Because, I mean, Kenny Omega wrestled a 9-year-old girl in Japan, and even yeah. though it was very, 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 very choreographed, she got slammed on the mat a little bit, and he's the current number one wrestler in the world, according to some generic magazine. So I'm not going to say that that's the issue. I think the veteran wrestlers don't like it because you're letting pretty much untrained people breaking kayfabe into the business, and that's what I think is pissing these, in- these workers, these veterans off. Greg, I want to start with you because you've been in the indies. What's your take on this, man? You know what? Surprisingly, I am not necessarily against this, especially since Izzy said this isn't like a full-time thing and she's it was just a one-time. It was a one-off, essentially. Um, I also don't have a problem with it because years and years ago, and this was brought up on their DVD, I believe, Eddie and Chavo Guerrero used to wrestle at their indie shows when they were about six and three, and people were really into it. So... And that's the Guerrero family. Not saying that Izzy is, you know, of Guerrero uh, heritage or lineage or any anything like that. But she is a huge fan, and she wants to be a wrestler someday. So you know, good for her for knowing what it's about this early, so that she doesn't like get her hopes up and get them dashed when she's eighteen and really legally allowed to train. 
Um, so I don't have a problem with the spot. And quite frankly, she took the choke slam better than I've seen some indie guys take it. So, you know, you, you, you can't criticize her that much if she takes bumps better than you. Or maybe that's the problem. Uh, she takes bumps better than them. But um, I don't have a problem with it. I see it as the entertainment aspect of it. Yeah. It's, it's not like she was being powerbombed through flaming tables or any stupid CCW stuff like that. I mean, it was just a simple back bump. I, I don't see a huge, huge problem with it. She wasn't in any real danger, so it's not like the guy was taking liberties. So I don't have a problem with it. Now, Aaron Rift, so obviously you understand if the veteran wrestlers are upset about letting a child into a ring. You know, I get that because they're very protective. The old school people, especially right. with the kayfabe. But let's look at it this way. For the people that thought she was in harm's way, when when young when girls in their six seven eight and boys at you know ten twelve years old that get into gymnastics, you're telling me they don't get right. hurt practicing to do these Olympic type events Great where their bodies go through way more trauma than wrestling. So yeah, what's I your mean, thoughts, man? Pretty much any athletic competition, there's a risk of getting hurt. Kids can get hurt, um, and I think in this case, like like Izzy said, it was a one off. And I don't think it's that big of a deal. If she was doing it on a regular basis, then, yeah, you could make the argument that she probably shouldn't be doing it. And, you know, there's been this talk about Paige and what happened with her back because she was doing all these bumps when she was a teenager, when her body was still developing. And that kind of messed her up with scoliosis. So, um, yeah, I could definitely see the concern in that regard. But if this was a one off thing and like you said, virtue was very safely done. Um, I, I don't think it was that big of a deal. Uh, TJS, anything you would like to add? Yeah, I, I just I don't see the problem here. Um, I'll say that the people that are bitching about this are probably the same people that popped when Nicholas won the tag team title with Braun at WrestleMania. And um, I don't. But he didn't take a bump, though. He didn't take a bump. That's <laughs> true. But if he did take a bump, I wonder if they would have anything to say about it. Um, oh, you, you know who did take a bump? May Young. When she was in her 60s, off of the stage through a table. I think she was, was older than that. Yeah, she yeah, was, was older there, than that. Was there backlash? That, that was Bubba that? Ray Dudley, right? Yeah, yeah. Bubba Ray Dudley power bombing her off the stage when yeah, she was like yeah. 83 or something. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, old brittle bones. Um, I don't know. Everything's just so backwards now. Um, there's not much else I can say about this. I don't see the issue here. Um, that's all. Greg. Right. I, I was going to say, have, have any of you seen the clip of the Young Bucks were, like, giving a birthday present to, like, an eight-year-old kid? They and they super kicked, super kicked the dad, and then the kid, like, got in some leg shots and ran off the ropes, and then the Bucks super kicked the kid. It's like, where, where's the outrage about that? They're super kicking an eight-year-old in the face. Or, or do the Young Bucks get away with it because they're indie darlings? Like, like what do you do there? Yeah. Greg Shelley, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Shooting from the hip. <laughs> All right, well, since that was Aaron kind of brought in that as our main event, does anybody else have any topics that we did not discuss today that you feel that we should? I'll start with you, TGS. I saw your hand go up first. Yes, sir. Um, I, you know, a list has recently come out, uh, you know, 500 really? best wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, 500 best wrestlers in the world. Huh. Uh, I'm not going to ask you guys for your 500 best wrestlers, but I will ask you for your top five starting from five and going up. Aaron? Right now? Oh, yeah, it's the best band right now. Spot. So over the past year, if I had to pick my top five guys, and I'm not sure of the order at this point because I'm still debating it, but um, obviously AJ Styles had, having a great run right now. Seth Rollins, he's been putting on clinics. Um, I'm looking at WWE right now. AJ Styles and Seth Rollins are definitely towards the top there. And um, New Japan, you got to look at Kenny Omega, who was number one, by the way, on that, that magazine's list. I Thank think you, Chris Jericho. Thank you, Chris Jericho. Yeah. Um, Daniel Bryan, even though he hasn't really lived up to the expectations, I think, up to this point. I mean, he came back, people were excited, but he really hasn't had like a, like a match of the year contender. And then, you know, Ciampa and Gargano, I think, have to be on the list as well. So... Uh, just throw those guys in there right now off the top of my head. Uh, Greg? Well, you mentioned lists. I mean, how can you mention lists and not include Chris Jericho? Because that guy has had a spectacular year with his 
matches in New Japan against Naito and with Kenny Omega and his appearances with WWE as well. He was in the greatest Royal Rumble, you know, his, his feud with Kevin Owens over the last year. Uh, you have to put Jericho up there. I mean, he probably brought more hype to New Japan than they've had in a long, long time. Not to discount anything the Bullet Club's done, but Jericho really put them over the top there. Um, you'll have to include Omega. You'll have to include Okada if you're talking about New Japan. AJ Styles, you mentioned Ciampa and Gargano. Um, would you put Aleister Black up there? It, it's a tough call because he was NXT champion. Um, he did lose it. Uh on Raw, and Virtue's got like this, you probably have to say Roman Reigns because he has been one of the top guys. Whether you like it or not, you probably have to put Reigns up there too. So I know there was more than five, but it's hard to come up with five on the spot just like that. Yeah. All right. I wouldn't put Reigns in my top five because I think WWE should have made him heal. Anyway, um, is it my turn, by the way, guys? Yeah, yeah go for it. Gar- I'd like to put Gargano in there. He's probably six, so that's my honorable mention. I just briefly came up with this. We're going to go count backwards from five. Number five, Chris Jericho. Uh, I would have liked to see a couple more matches. He had two, two or three. But, right. he, I mean, he taught Kenny Omega how to sports entertain. Maybe Omega was already going to know how to do that anyway. And they, New Japan finally said, you're going to be our IWGP heavyweight champion. So Jericho, five. Ciampa, four. Rollins, three, AJ, two, and Kenny Omega, one. That's my list. All right, so you agree with that magazine about number one? Uh, yeah, I say, I actually picked Kenny Omega for the last probably year and a half as number one. Um, I, I, yeah, that's the guy that I would like to see in WWE the most. Yes, we know when you come to WWE, things are different, right? And you're not necessarily – your matches – I mean, look at Nakamura, right? But – I want to see it. I want to see what they would do with him. That My intrigue lies on Kenny Omega more than any other wrestler because we're WWE fans mostly, right? That's the main product we watch, we yeah. talk about. That's where you want to see the wrestlers, even with the crappy booking and the stale creative. And, and keep still in mind, to, you still you know, want to see it because it's the big stage. And keep in mind, WWE is the busiest schedule. Look at AJ Styles. He just did his 30th straight pay-per-view match in a row, and he's been – doing the live events. I mean, he's gotten little injuries here and there, but he's been consistent since he came in in January 2016. So uh, naturally, that's going to take a toll on your body also, and, and maybe uh, that could be a factor in AJ not being able to have the type of match that somebody like Kenny Omega can have. So I think it's a combination of, of that and the fact that the, the creative just isn't allowing him to go out there and have the kind of match we know he can well, have. Exactly, and, and Omega got to wrestle Jericho. He had a fantastic match that Meltzer didn't give more than 3.75 stars. Probably to me, besides the Jericho match, I liked Omega and Switchblade. That was a fantastic match that nobody talks about. And then, of course, we know he wrestled Okada. Omega's had the gift of being booked in these matches where his opponents can help him deliver great matches. So, yeah, that's that's, we're biased, right? He's had an unfair advantage because some – other wrestlers don't get the opportunities other ones do. Because isn't that list, right, TJS? It's kayfabe list. It's based on how you're booked for the most part. It's championships you won, main events you've been in. So well, that's my before, take. Man. Before I give my, my five, I want to know, uh, Virtue, mm-hmm. you made it clear who you think is better between AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. I want to uh, get Aaron's input and Greg's. Who do you think is the better wrestler all around? Between AJ between Styles two. and Seth Rollins? Between, between, yeah. Well, I, I would say in 2018, this past year, I'd go with Rollins. I think Rollins has been stealing the show more times than not. I think he's been the MVP of Monday Night Raw. AJ has been very consistent, though, but I think Rollins has just been a little bit more memorable with his performances, You know, especially that gauntlet match earlier this year. I think Rollins is just on on a level that very few can can reach. AJ has been close, but I think I would give the slight edge to Rollins, at least for this past year. Greg? Greg, what do you think? I think I'd have to give the slight edge to AJ. I know oh, I Rollins agree. Been, I, I know Rollins has been fantastic this year, but AJ Styles is also AJ Styles. Yep. AJ but has been no pun intended. AJ sells better than Rollins. Rollins is fantastic in his matches, but he doesn't sell that well, in my opinion. 
I've 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 been an AJ fan since the early TNA days, and, and you know that's how I became a fan of Christopher Daniels too, who I actually believe is better than AJ. Um, and, and maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but I'm I'm a solid Daniels guy, and I always have been. I am too. A, AJ AJ I think is slightly better than Rollins. I'd love I don't know if the two of them have ever faced off. I don't think it's ever happened. I've never seen any match clips of it. It might have. If there is, put them in the comments if you find one. But I don't think it's happened. I might be wrong because my Ring of Honor history is weak. Yeah, but... they, they might have at some point. They might have done a PWG match at some point. I don't remember off the top of my head. But well, Aaron, Aaron, do this philosophy. Put AJ in Rollins' place, and he would have wrestled all those exact same matches and same lengths as Rollins did. What would you say then? See what I mean? Yeah, that, that's I'm, so. The probably say he's better then. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm also I'm also not counting the Survivor Series match because that's not a one on one. I'm talking straight up one on one matches. That's 2016 Survivor Series. Well, I think I think this year's no DQ Year End Awards is going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be one of the closest <laughs> matches ever in terms of the voting. I'm really curious to see how people vote on that one. I think it's going to be very close between Rollins and AJ. Um, I'd like to see Brian in the in the mix, but uh, my feeling is, you know, he he needs that breakout performance, and he he really hasn't had it since coming back, in my opinion. Um, and Omega will be up there too. It's it's going to be a fun uh, male superstar of the year uh, voting period this year for the No DQ Awards for sure. Start putting them in the comments, folks. No DQ Galaxy, load our comments up for this video. Of your top five in order, and we we can get a it's like a case study. We can get a better understanding where uh, year end awards might go. Yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and give my five. Um, number five, uh, I have to say, Braun Strowman. Um, I mean, the guy he's solid. Uh, you can't and he, he's he's good at what he does because he's supposed to be a powerhouse. He's a giant, and he's he's really good at what he does. Um, he doesn't put on technical clinics, but he's not supposed to. So I think he's very good at the role that he's in. Four, I think it's got to be Chris Jericho. Uh, it's like you guys said, solid matches. Even though he hasn't had a whole lot, he's still uh, the GOAT, in my opinion. And um, number three, I think uh, Johnny Gargano. Uh, he's had several Match of the Year contenders, and he's a great baby face. Uh Awesome stuff. And now, to answer the question, who I think is better between AJ and Rollins, number two, I have to give to AJ because he's not having the super memorable matches like Rollins is. I can't name many really good AJ Styles matches you know, this year, but with Rollins, I can name at least three off the top of my head, and that's why Rollins, I believe, is the current best wrestler in the world. Over Omega? Over wow. Omega. <laughs> Is it because it, is it WWE bias? You think? Yeah, it is. I, I mean, admit. you know, that's okay. That's yeah. Well, I mean, keep in mind again. Look at the schedule that these guys have. Does Kenny Omega yeah. have the schedule that Seth Rollins has? If oh. Seth Rollins was doing a match, one big match every couple of months, yeah, and he was in New Japan, I think Rollins could do the type of matches that Kenny Omega is having. But Rollins is there almost on a weekly basis. It seems just. Stealing the show on Monday Night Raw and, and really saving the show, in my opinion, making it somewhat worth watching. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 we're definitely torn. So, like I said, I think it's going to be really close this year with those guys. Good topic, TGS. We talked about that for 10 minutes. Anybody else have one or are we? Cool? I say we just Good save some stuff for next week. Yeah. All right. Fair Can't enough. Talk. Well, let's go around the horn and do your plugs. Uh, Greg, I'll start with you because you're the wrestling <laughs> I always get this wrong. Wrestling Trivia Challenge? Champion. Yes. Champion. Yeah, I'm just like sometimes. Go ahead. World champion, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. And even though you dodged my challenge on Twitter, Virtue, it's okay. What challenge is it? I, I, yeah, if I was better at wrestling trivia and retained it better, I'd, maybe I need to study. Maybe I'll start going into studying, and when I feel like I'm prepared, maybe it, you'll probably still be champ by then. <laughs> I probably will be the way this reign's going. 172. <laughs> Plus days, 200 total between the two reigns. I mean, who's who's really going to stop me at this rate? I, I, I've, I've had an incredible reign, and I don't look to stop anytime soon. 
You can follow me on Twitter at PA Sensation. Buy a shirt, prowrestlingtees.com slash PA Sensation. There's going to be a sale this weekend. I think it's because All In's happening. Yep. <laughs> and I'm surprised we really didn't talk about that at all on the show because it's happening this weekend. I know, right? Um, yeah, but but you know what? You know what else is happening? We'll call talk in. about it after. Yeah, we'll talk about it afterwards. I, I was going to say call-in is happening, and that's Aaron's thing, which I'm sure he'll plug uh, in just a little bit. But ProWrestlingTees.com slash PA Sensation. Buy a shirt. <laughs> buy a shirt from the NoDQ. Just search NoDQ on Pro Wrestling Tees. You'll find all our shirts. You'll find TJS's, Virtues, Riffs. Riff has and Jeff has like 25. You know, find find a shirt that you like. There's a sale going on. Buy them all. Buy buy all my shirts. Buy all the no DQ shirts. Give them to your friends. Give them something cool to wear. Yep, definitely. Cool. Well, thank you, Greg, Greg for being on again. Now we're gonna pass it to TJS. Yes. Greg, how long did you say you've been wrestling trivia challenge champion? Uh, for this reign, it'll be 173 days, I believe, in counting. Oh. Okay, and Greg, I hate to break it to you, man, but uh, your reign's not going to hit the 180 because I'm taking the Wrestling Trivia Challenge Championship from you. I'm issuing you a challenge. For oh, this. look at this. Uh, and you're on the No DQ Review number 31, baby. I'm going to oh, take boy. that title from you. I'm going to humble you like the Iron Sheik did. And uh, I'm sorry, man, but uh, it, it's got to go. And when I annihilate Greg Cherry, I'm dedicating the match to my friend Virtue. Um, so, you know, you know, sleep with that title next to your pillow. He Greg. does. Uh, I hope so, because I'm coming for it. And there's nothing that you can do about that. Uh, and wow. other news, you can Breaking follow me news. on Twitter at NoDQ underscore TJS. And uh, you can go to NoDQ.com slash TJS. It'll take you to my Facebook page. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, NoDQ underscore TJS. And soon... You'll see me posing with the Wrestling Trivia Challenge Championship. Damn. What, new, what hashtag Aaron, new profile pic. Yes, Greg, do you have something else this, to say? Of course I do. I always have something to say when somebody... Promo changes. time. Exactly. TJS, I'll keep it short and sweet. You might as well de- dedicate this match to Cindy because you're going to do just about as well as her. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to be champion for as long as I want to... To keep it, and I don't want to lose it anytime soon. So you better study up, because you're going to be in for a fight. We'll see. We'll see. Can we put it in Hell in a Cell? <laughs> we, pro- we probably could. I, I mean, why Tri- not? Trivia in a Cell. I like it. I don't think anybody has done it. Book it. Can you put a cell? Yeah. Can you put a, a cell graphic, a cage graphic over the screen, like a filter? Aaron Riff, tell everybody what you want, man. Well, there is a Pro Wrestling Tees sale this weekend. The code is all in, 20% off all merchandise. Head over to nodq.com slash shirts. Pick up a shirt. Everybody's got one. We have over 20 designs on there. And I will be doing the call-in special, two-hour live stream, uh, perhaps by the time many of you are watching this. Um, Stay tuned to nodq.com this weekend. I will be watching all in. I will try to watch it while I'm in Seattle prior to the Foo Fighters concert I'm going to. Uh, but I, I am going to try to do a live video afterwards also. Somehow, between all that chaos with the, the Foo Fighters show, I'm going to try to do the live reactions video. I'll see. No guarantee, though. But I am going to try to do it and uh, watch the all-in event live on pay-per-view. And I, I definitely think it's worth buying. I know some people are saying they're going to stream it. You know what? Support these guys. They're doing something unprecedented. And they're changing the game. It's good for the business. If you're ever going to buy a pay-per-view, this is the one to buy. You know, this this is a big event. It's a big deal. I say show these guys the support. Order it on pay-per-view. Everybody, everyone watching this, Greg, you buy it. TJS, you buy it. Virtue, you buy it. Support, support indie wrestling. Help the business grow stronger. That's all I got. Okay, support indie wrestling. If you live near Cleveland on September 15th, UXWA, maximum effort, and it's going to be Virtue's Army versus Team Razor Sharp, and I threw out the stipulation, when my team wins, it's, six man, it's a six-man tag team match, when my team wins, Razor Sharp is bye-bye from UXWA. And I, I'm so confident if they win, if, he, if his team wins, that the, at the next event, he gets me in the ring for five minutes. Whoa. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. So if you live anywhere near Cleveland, it's $10 for pre-sale tickets, people. Get a hold of me on Twitter, at NoDQ underscore Virtue, or on Facebook, 
NoDQ.com slash virtue with a small V. That's all I got. So for Aaron Rift, for Greg Cherry, and for TJS, I'm Virtue. See you next week.